three. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And welcome to the Way of Truth and our Torah study for Shabbat. And this is our favorite. It's our favorite day of the week. And we, we went over that in prayer this morning. It's just, I think it's all of our favorite days. We get to sit and study the Word with Yah and with fellow believers. And it makes it so glorious. And it's so good to be here. Glorious. So guys, what, what's the story that we're studying today? Yeah. Well, it starts with, the, the name of it is Vayashah, which is anti dwelt And that is the very first verse of Genesis 37, 1. And Yaakov dwelt in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of Canaan. <clears throat> so this is the name of the Torah Portia. And what are we... The second verse says, this is the genealogy of Yaakov, and it says Yosef. So what are we studying today? Come on. Yosef. Yeah. We're going to study the story of Yosef. And right smack dab in the middle of the story of Yosef, we stop and we go and we study the story of Judah. What? I mean, how, what happens? And then we pick up and start the study of Yosef again. So we've got a lot of interest, interesting things in this study, Portia. And uh, what we're going to see, first of all, I want you to understand that you're going to see that Yaakov loved Yosef more. And it's because Yosef so resembled Yaakov. I mean, I'm, I've got some resemblances here. I'm going to go ahead and give those to you before we start. But Yaakov and Joseph were... Uh, huh. <coughs> They were both uh, sons of a uh, mother who uh, could not bear children, both of them. And uh, they were both, they both had one sibling. I've got something right here that I can't read, which is really scary. What's uh, that? Yaakov and Yosef, I don't know what it says. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Yaakov received Esau's birthright. Joseph received whose first wife? Reuben's. Reuben's. Why? Because Reuben slept with his He violated, father. he defiled his father's bed. Mm -hmm. Yaakov was hated by his brother. <coughs> Joseph was hated by all of his brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, both became very, very wealthy. Both went to Egypt. Both were highly exalted. Uh, both of them, listen, both of them were shepherds. Shepherds was, that being a shepherd back then was very important. Uh, Moses was a shepherd. King David was a shepherd. It Abraham, the Abraham was a shepherd. And Isaac was a shepherd. Yes, well, it, they had something to shepherd. Mm -hmm. That was important. Yes, it did teach them to lead people because people are like what? Sheep. Sheep. Why do they call them sheeple? Sad. And Yahuwah guarded both of them. Like with his love and commitment, he was always with them. Yes. Yes, he, he protected them and guarded them and led them. He, he led them. He was the angel, the messenger angel that was always sent to them. Both. They both received him. And I have one other example, but I can't read my writing. So, <laughs> so we'll have to figure that one out later. Uh, as we go through, we are going to see, because what do we know in every Torah portion? Who shows up? Yeshua. 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 Uh, it, everything is a foreshadowing of our Messiah. Every lesson is a <coughs> foreshadowing. And this one more so than most. Because Yosef is a type and shadow of Yeshua. Now, is he a type and shadow of Yeshua or the Messiah ben Yosef or Messiah ben David? As Messiah ben Yosef, he's Joseph. Right? Okay, so so as the suffering servant, this is who, who Joseph is. He's a suffering servant, right? Until he becomes exalted. Right. And, okay, so he is a, a picture of Yeshua, his first coming. Mm -hmm. So he comes the first time as Messiah ben Yosef. Has he come as the king yet? No. Is he the king right now? No. Is he? No. How do you know that? Because that's how he's going to come. The last time he comes as a, a ruling king uh, with a rod of iron. And so the second time he comes, it's just like Dan said, he comes as a ruling king. And then he will be likened unto 
uh, Messiah Ben David, but he didn't come the first time to rule and reign. No. So he's not our king yet. He came as a servant. He came as a servant. And what is he acting as right now? He's sitting where? The right hand of Yahweh. The right hand of Yahweh as our what? Our high priest. So he is our high priest right now, guys. And that, doesn't that give you comfort? Yeah. Yeah. Gives me comfort to know that that's who is protecting us right now. Okay, do we have anything that anyone wants to add before we get started in the Torah Portia? Not one person? Wake well, up. Wake up. <laughs> Joseph was hated by his brothers, mm -hmm. as was Yeshua, mm -hmm. by the, his brothers in the Jewish synagogue. Uh -huh. So um, he had to overcome that. But he was kind of cocky. I mean, he, he... Guys, that was not good. Yeah, he told his brothers <coughs> that he was going to rule over them, which made it even worse. And uh, he just kind of lauded it. Look, he, he was an annoying, he was that annoying younger brother. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, did he go out and fight with the boys? Mm -hmm. No, he didn't fight, join them in the battling. He was too young. So he didn't go out and fight with them. He was, from what you will, we will hear today out of the book of Yasher, he was beautiful. I mean, women just, they, they couldn't take their eyes off of him. He was so beautiful. His eyes were evidently like a pool of water, and he was just gorgeous to look at. Uh, but this is going to be a fun study today. We are going to be in the book of Yasher and Genesis and the book of Amos. You read a little bit <clears throat> so let's get started. Uh, we're starting in, th in Genesis 37, 1, and here we go. And Yaakov dwelt in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of Canaan, which is what? Where is Canaan? Land. Israel. It's the promised land. And this is the genealogy of Yaakov, Yosef. So isn't that funny, though, that it's just Yosef that's mentioned here? Being 17 years old, he was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the young man was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Yosef brought an evil report of them to his father. Guys, <clears throat> what happens to the, what are, what are they called, tattletale? What happens to the tattletale? Nobody likes to, to be around the tattletale, do they? Okay, already we see a division, okay? He's with the servants, the slave girls' wow. sons. He's not even with Leah's sons. So he's with the slave girl's sons. Look at John 10, 11. Who gets there first? Okay, Seth, would you read John 10, 11, please? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Okay, so... We're, we're going to be looking at the comparisons. Who is that talking about? Yeshua. Yeshua. Okay, so we, as we go through, we're going to look at verses in comparison of Yeshua to Yosef. So, Yosef was a shepherd. Uh, and we're in verse 3. And Yisrael loved Yosef more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a long robe. What was the robe for, guys? What was, and it was a long robe. The longer the robe, the more important it was. It doesn't say a coat of many colors, but it was long, which gave him what? Like I said, apart. authority. authority. As, it gave him authority, and it definitely did set him apart. Seth, because it gave him authority. It showed authority from the father. Because who gave him the robe? His father. Daddy. Okay. And daddy loved him more. Mm -hmm. Let's compare it to Matthew three seventeen about Yeshua. In Matthew 3, 17, we're going to see what Abba said about his son. Who's there? Ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, and see a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my son, the beloved, in whom I dwell. The Yahweh. beloved of Yahweh. So Yahweh's saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I find delight. Perfect. Okay. Verse 4. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and were not even able to speak to him peaceably. And Yosef dreamed a dream 
Let's stop for just a second. They hated him. Who hated Yeshua? And I think Valerie's already answered the this. Pharisees, but the synagogue people. Who were his brothers? The Jews, the tribe of Judah. Look at John 1, 11, and somebody else pull up John 7, 5. <clears throat> okay, Seth, you go first. 111 says, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. He came to his own, because he came to where? Jerusalem. And who would not receive? receive? And Jerusalem, guys, is Jerusalem. There were no J's. During this period of time, there still are no J's in the Hebrew language. So it was actually called Jerusalem. And so he came to Jerusalem, to the tribe of Judah, which he was from. And did they receive him? No. Okay, Bethany, 7 5. Um, for even his brothers did not believe in him. Even his own brothers didn't believe in him. So, I mean, now we're getting to his kinfolk. Not just his, his tribal brothers, but his own, own brothers didn't even believe in him. Okay, so now he's dreamed a dream. They lived with him. They did live with him. So you would have thought, hmm, they would have seen things that nobody else saw. You know, if you grow up around it, is it, do you realize a miracle when you see it? Mm -mm. Probably not, mm -hmm. because it was a common thing for them exactly. to see. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's Yeshua. He's different. There's, yeah, he's different from us. But, I mean, there's nothing special about him, right? He's just our brother. Yeah, he's our brother. <clears throat> okay, we're in Genesis 37, excuse my voice, <clears throat> 37 verse 5. And Yosef dreamed a dream and told it to his brothers, so they hated him even more. So here he is sharing his dream with his brothers, big no-no, because his dream kind of makes him exalted. He said to them, please listen to the dream which I have dreamed. See, we were binding sheaves in the midst of the field, and see, my sheaf rose up and also stood up, and see, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. Can you see him, this beautiful young man, telling his brothers, we were all out in the field, we were working, we were binding our sheaves, but mine rose up, and yours, guess what yours did? They had to bow down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Shall you indeed rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed still another dream and related it to his brothers and said, Yosef didn't learn much, did he? He didn't learn very fast. He's like, I had another dream. It was a good dream to him, but it wasn't to them. He said, See, I have dreamed another dream. And see... The sun and the moon and the 11 stars bowed down to me. And he related it to his father and to his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said, said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall we, your mother and I and your brothers, indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father guarded the word. And his brothers went to feed their father's sheep in Shechem. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Yisrael said to Yosef, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am. He named me. We sang that song today. Here, here I am. And so he, sent him, he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the sheep and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. Guys, who else was sent to the sheep? Yeshua. Yeshua. Look at Matthew 15, 24. I want, I want you to see the exact flock that he was actually sent to. Oh, we've got Stephen Tranum with us today. Hi, Stephen. And Terry Hafer. Hey, Terry. It's an iconic shift for the lost sheep. Read, read, it, read it out loud, Dennis. Uh, I'm not there, but it's Dennis. an iconic shift for the lost hey. sheep of the house of Israel. So it's exactly as he said. He answering said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Yeshua was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Only to them. That's who he was sent for. He was sent to pull them back in. So we see here, Joseph is sent to the sheep. Okay, we are in verse <clears throat> 15. And a certain man found him, and see, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What do you seek? 
Now, when we go to the book of Yasher, we see that this was actually an angel. And I, I know Kalina had asked earlier, is, he a, is it a man or an angel? And she already knew the answer to that. But uh, in, in the book of Yasher, it actually tells us it's an angel. He's guiding, he's guiding Yosef. And he said, I'm seeking my brothers. Please inform me where they are feeding their sheep. And the man said to him, they have left here, for I heard them say, let us go towards Dotham. And Yosef went after his brothers and found them in Dotham. Um, I want you to look at Matthew 26, 42, and I'm letting others read. I'm trying to conserve my voice. Are you there? Are you there yet, Dennis? Uh, you, no way, Sean. Yeah. I didn't even tell you the page. Read. You did. You said 42. Oh, okay. I was on the wrong page. 2642. Uh, again, he went away a second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is impossible for this to pass unless I drink it, let your desire be done. Okay, that was interesting because I don't know why that was there. But it's a good <laughs> verse because every verse in Scripture is what? Mucho bueno. Uh, so very, I was wrong? No, you uh, weren't, but uh, I was. Oh, uh, okay. See, I'm, I'm wrong, and I admit it. Okay. But you did good. Okay. Was that the right verse? <laughs> well, no, I'm not for you being wrong, so. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, 2642. Is it 40? Maybe he came to talk with him and him asleep. I think that I probably okay. wrote the wrong verse there. Okay. I'm really good at that. Transpose figures. And they saw him, okay, in verse 17. And the man said, They have left here, for I heard them say, Let us go towards Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. And they saw him from a distance. And before he came near them, they plotted against him to kill them. Guys, they did not like him very much, did they? No. And they said to each other, See, this master of dreams is coming. I need someone to read John 15, 25. John 15? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Get the verse out. Loud. John 15, 25. Uh -huh. But that the word might be filled, which was written in their Torah, Torah, they hated me without a cause. Hmm. Who did they hate without a cause? The Torah. <coughs> they hated Yeshua oh. without a cause. But listen, people hate the Torah. They hate the law without a cause because they don't even know what the law says, right? And Yeshua is the Torah. Yeshua is the Torah. So, Sean, yes. They hate the Torah and they hate Yeshua. Good Point. And they hated Joseph. But guys, listen, did he kind of taunt them? Yeah. He did taunt them. So though they hated Yeshua without a cause, Joseph did taunt them a bit. And we'll see that when we get into the book of Yasher. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're in verse 20. Now then, come and let us now kill him and throw him to, into some pit and shall say, some wild beast has devoured him. Let us then see what comes of his dreams. But Reuben heard and rescued him from their hands and said, let us not strike his being. Guys, who was Reuben? He was the firstborn of Yaakov. He was the firstborn. He was the, the oldest, and as the oldest, what, he was, what was he responsible for? All of his younger siblings. Mm -hmm. Any of you who have been the firstborn in family, you know you're responsible for your younger siblings. And uh, so that's what we, we see here. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood. So he's, he's telling them, don't you kill him, don't hurt him. Throw him into this pit, which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him in order to rescue him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So Reuben had good intentions. He was going to come back later pulled Joseph out of the pit and take him home. So that was a good thing. So it came to be when Joseph had come to his brothers that they stripped him of his robe, the long robe which was on him. And they took him and threw him into the pit. And the pit was empty and there was no water in it. And guys, the pit is exactly a replication or a representative of the tomb that Yeshua was thrown into, was, he, was laid into, excuse me. And they sat down to eat a meal, and they lifted their eyes and looked and saw a company of Yishmaelites coming from Gilad with their camels, bearing spices and balm and myrrh, going to take them to Mitzrayim. So, Ishmaelites, who was this? 
Who was Ishmael? He was um, um, Abraham's firstborn Isaac's son. Isaac's brother. No, it was uh, Abraham's firstborn son. Yes, it was Isaac's yeah. brother. It was his half brother. Yeah, exactly. It was uh, Abraham's firstborn son by who? Hagar. Hagar. Princess. That's it. And where was she from? Egypt. She was from Egypt. So, of course, the Ishmaelites are going to Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. And Yehuda said to his brothers, What would we gain if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let us not lay our hand upon him. For he is our brother, our flesh, and his brothers listen to him. And man, Midianite traders passed by, so they pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Mitzrayim. Look at, um, okay, we see here that Joseph sold for how much? 20 pieces of silver? <laughs> how much did Yeshua sell for? 30. 30 pieces of silver. And we're not going to go there, but that's in Matthew 26, 15. So in Matthew 26, 15, we see the exact same thing. Yes, ma'am. Is that a lot? 30 pieces of silver, I think we had it picked up. 30 pieces of silver was equal to... Is it 30,000? Is it in the bag? Oh, the precision. I, I have that figured, yes. Go back there and look at it. I have it figured up somewhere in my, yeah. my scriptures, but I don't remember what it is. So look at it. <clears throat> but listen, when, when they paid Judas that 30 pieces of silver, what did he end up doing? He gave it back to them. Listen, what we're going to see in the book of Yasher is that when they first bought Joseph, it was um, actually the Midianites. They sold him immediately to the Ishmaelites. So you can't see it exactly what took place here, but in the book of Yasher, it really gets specific. But they immediately sold him. So they didn't keep him, and they didn't keep the money. They sold him for exactly what they got uh, from, from the or exactly what they paid for him from the brothers. <clears throat> and Reuben returned to the pit, and see, Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his garments, and that's a sign of remorse. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where am I to go? So they took Joseph's robe, slew a little male goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. And this is a, a this is a repeat. This shows exactly what happens in Revelation nineteen thirteen. Is anyone there? I can get there. You can get there from here. Nineteen thirteen. And guys, this is th what we're going to see on Yom Kippur, when Yeshua returns, his robe is going to be what? What? It's going to be dipped in blood. Oh. And having been dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yahuwah. That's it. Isn't that beautiful? The memory. The memory. It is the, the word is just like Valerie said, the memory, the breathed word of Yah. Yeah. And we see that throughout the Old Testament. Yes. In the Aramaic, it, it spells it out. Mm -hmm. In the Aramaic, which is a more exact uh, translation of the Hebrew, it spells it out. It talks about the memory, the, the word of Yah, the breathed word of Yah. So they took you, okay, we're in 32, and they sent the long robe and brought it to their father and said, we have found this, please look. Is it the robe of your son or not? Wouldn't that be horrible? You know what Yaakov was thinking. And he recognized it, and he said, it is my son's robe. An evil beast has devoured him, and Yosef is torn, torn to pieces. So basically what they've done is they've handed over... Joseph's robe of authority, and they allowed Yaakov to come to a conclusion of what happened. They didn't even have to lie to him. They said, look, we found this. That was a lie. But uh, they let him assume what had happened. But he, he, uh, Yaakov loved Joseph so very much because his other uh, nine, uh, ten sons were grown and big and could go out to walk. Joseph was young, 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 and by the wife of, I mean, his mother was Raquel, Rachel. The one he loved, loved her. Rachel. So it was just, <coughs> you could just see that he, he, he tended to, to favor these, you know, and Benjamin was a little bitty, so Joseph was kind of the one he would love. Well, and Joseph was the one that was most like him. Right. He most resembled him. 
Um, and I don't use the Talmud, but in the Talmud, it does say that he was the son that actually looked like Yaakov. So I, I, I don't know whether that's true or not. Can't verify it. There's nothing else that verifies that. But, but it does say that he physically resembled Yaakov. So Yaakov was a beautiful man. And Yaakov tore his garments and put sackcloth on his waist and mourned for his son many days. And his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, Now let me go down into Sheol to my son in mourning. So his father wept for him. And Sheol is where? Hell. It's in the grave. <laughs> Not hell. <laughs> Sheol is the grave. Yeah. <clears throat> And the Midianites had sold him, had sold him in Mitzram to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the, of the guard. Okay, at this point, guys, I want us to go into the book of Asher, and I'll be reading out of, of uh, Joseph Lumpkin's book. Some of you have the Sefer. If you see anything in this Sefer, Sefer, that is any different, please speak up. And we're going to Yasher. Chapter 41. And we're going to be reading verses 18, starting in 18. <clears throat> I think my throat's getting better. So thank you for your prayers. You're welcome. I think I'm able to. I'm, I think I'm. Thank you, Sean. Specifically for yours. You said 41, 18, what? 18, I just spilled coffee in yeah, my... Yeah, you want them speechless. My, yeah, prayers. sure, yes. <laughs> so we're going to go um, 18 through 25, and then we're also going to go... Um, we're going to go 41, 1 through 17. Excuse me. Right, Y'all ready? 41, 1 through 17? Uh-huh. Okay. You want to read for sure. me, please? And I'm going to turn around. <coughs> 41, 1 through Hello, Alicia and hi, Randy. Is that Alicia? Uh-huh. <laughs> Hi, Alicia. Thank you. Okay, I'm turning you around so that. Randy? Randy Butler. Randy. Who? This is having a fit over there. Okay, would you read 1 through 17, Seth? Sure. And the revolution of the years of the sons of Jacob journeyed from Shechem, and they came to Chevron, to the father, excuse me, to their father, Yitchak. And they dwelt there, but their flocks and herds, and they fed daily in Shechem. For there was, excuse me, for there was there in those days good and fat pasture. And Jacob and his sons and all their household dwelt in the valley of Shechem. And it was in those days, in that year, being the hundred and sixth year of the life of Jacob, and the tenth year of Jacob's coming in the Padan Aram, and Leah. The woman of Jacob died. She was fifty-one years old, and she died in Chevron. And Jacob, or excuse me, Jacob and his sons buried her in the cave of Machpelah, which is in Chevron. And Abraham had dwelt, excuse me, and Abraham had bought from the children of Sheph for the for the possession of a burial place. Okay, and guys, listen. All of the patriarchs are buried there, except for. Rahel, yeah. Rachel. Mm -hmm. Rachel's not buried there. She died so that way. Leah died six years after Rachel died. It's mm -hmm. about six year period there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so we're in verse four. Keep on going, Seth, you're doing great. And the sons of Jacob dwelt with their father in the valley of Chevron, and all the inhabitants of the <coughs> land knew their strength <coughs> and their fame went throughout the land. And Yosef, the son of Jacob, and his brother Benjamin, ben Benjamin, the sons of Rachel, the woman, the woman of Jacob, were yet young in those days, and did not know, excuse me, and did not go out with their brethren during the battles in all the cities of Emoria. You want me to take over? Yeah. <laughs> Benjamin spelled weird. I know. <laughs> so, so what what you see there is Seth is reading out the Sefer and. The, the, names, <coughs> the names in there are very, very different. So he, he was, but that's why I'll let you read it. So I wouldn't be struggling over it. <laughs> okay, so what we see there is what? 
Joseph didn't go out and fight with his brothers, right? Nope. All the other boys went out and fought except for he and Benjamin because Benjamin was just a baby. <coughs> and when Joseph saw the strength of his brothers and their greatness, he praised them and extolled them, but he ranked himself, what? Oh. Greater than them and extolled himself above them. And Yaakov, his father, also loved him more than any of his sons, for he was a son <coughs> of his old age. And through his love toward him, he made him a coat of many colors. So in the, the scriptures, we see it's a coat of authority, a long coat. Here in, in, in the Sefer, does it say a coat of many colors? It says a long? Yeah, no, many colors. Many colors. So we've got a discrepancy there. We need to go to the Hebrew and actually translate it from straight from Hebrew is what we would do if we had time but the color of his coat and the length is not the important thing right now right okay so we are in seven and when Yosef saw that his father loved him more than his brothers he continued to elevate himself above his brothers so it's like they had a, a little wound there and he was taking salt and he was rubbing it in that wound. Look, daddy loves me more than he loves you. I mean, look what he gave me. Oh, have you seen my coat? Mm -hmm. Let me show you my coat. Long and many colored. <laughs> We're gonna call it bow. And he, he brought to his father evil reports concerning them. So not only was he like bragging about how much he was loved, he also was tattletelling on them. I want us to look at two verses here. Look at James 3.14, and I'm also looking at 1 Samuel, Valerie, 2.3. <clears throat> Excuse me. 3.14? Mm-hmm. And you're going to read a few verses there. Okay. What you say, 1 Samuel 3.14? First Samuel two, three. three. Oh. Okay. okay. Uh, three fourteen and John. But if you have bitter jealousy and self seeking in your hearts, do not boast against the lie I mean against the lie and against and lie against the truth. Mm -hmm. Do not boast against the lie and lie against the truth. There you go. Or do, yeah. This is not the wisdom coming down from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and self-seeking are, there is confusion and every foul deed. That's it right there. So guys, listen, we should never exalt ourselves, okay? We shouldn't try to place ourselves above any, anyone, right? Because that's self-seeking. So I want you to see what James says about that. I mean, whoever is wise and understanding among you, let him show his good behavior his works in meekness and wisdom. We, meekness of wisdom. Valerie, would you read uh, 1 Samuel? I want to start with one. Do, please. About Hannah. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in Yah Yahweh, Yahuwah. My horn has been high in Yahuwah. My mouth is open wide over my enemies, for I have rejoiced in your deliverance. There is no one set apart like Yahweh, for there is no one beside you and there is no rock like our Elohim. There you go. What was her chapter? Uh, <coughs> First Samuel 2, 3. Yeah. It says, Do not multiply words so proudly, proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For Yahuwah is an L of knowledge and by him deeds are weighed. What's weighed? Deeds. What are deeds? Works. Works. So, live streamers out there, what we do, does it matter? Yes. Yes, it yeah. does. And James even tells us that. And John tells us that. And Peter tells us that. If you believe, you're going to what? Do. Obey and do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so, we've seen that. What? What? Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, we're in Yasher 41, verse 8. Y'all did good. The sons of Yaakov seen all of Yosef's conduct toward them and that their father loved him more than any of them, hated him, and could not 
even speak peaceably to him. And Joseph was 17 years old, and he was still magnifying himself above his brothers and thought of raising himself above them. <coughs> what did we just see? That's earthly, demonic, mm -hmm. yep. evil spiritually. Confusion. So, yeah, it brings about confusion, guys. And, and it, it really does cause problems in a family, mm -hmm. in a group. And, and are we a family? Yes. So none of us should be elevated not one of above. Not, of us. None of us are better than us. not ever. a respecter of persons. That's right. right. I mean, yeah. all of us mess up, don't we? Yep. Every one of us. Everyone. Some of us, a lot more than others. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I was, thinking, I was thinking if I did, I can't bring anything on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Forty one ten. We're ignoring him. At that time he dreamed a dream and he came to his brothers and told him his dream. So even before the dreams started, he had already started this this tug of war for Dad's heart. And he said to them, I dreamed a dream and behold, we were all binding sheaves in the field and my sheaf rose and placed itself, look, it placed itself on the ground, and your sheaves surrounded it and bowed down to it. And his brothers answered him and said to him, what means this dream that you did dream? Did you imagine in your heart to reign or rule over us? I mean, guys, listen, in the book of Yashar, we've skipped by a lot of the, the feats of these brothers, but these guys are not wimps. <laughs> These are masculine, muscular men. Simeon, just his scream alone, mm -hmm. would knock people over. That's just a yell. Let him draw his sword, and you're in big trouble, okay? So these are mighty men of old that we're talking about. And this little, you know, 17-year-old punk mm -hmm. is, is really, um, he's really taunting them. <laughs> Yes, <coughs> and, and the, these are the, the, these big muscular guys going, you think we're going to bow down to you? I'm trying to talk like a big tough guy. <laughs> did, it, did it sound scary? No? Yeah. Oh, well. Okay, <coughs> and still he came, and he told the thing to his father, Yaakov. And Yaakov, what did he do? He kissed, he kissed Joseph when he heard these words from his mouth, and Yaakov blessed Joseph. And when the sons of Yaakov saw that his father had blessed Joseph and kissed him for saying that he was going to be exalted above them and that he loved him greatly. They became more jealous of him and hated him all the more. And after this, Joseph dreamed another dream and related the dream to his father in the presence of his brothers. And Joseph said to his father and brothers, Behold, I have again dreamed a dream. And don't you know they were so excited to hear what this dream was about. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me. And his father heard the words of Joseph in his dream. And seeing that his brothers hated Joseph on account of this matter, Yaakov therefore rebuked Joseph before his brothers on account of this thing, saying, What does this dream mean, to, mean which you have dreamed? And this magnifying you yourself before your brothers, who are older than you are. Do you imagine in your heart that I and your mother and your eleven brothers will come and bow down to you, that you speak these things. And his brothers were jealous of him on account of his words and dreams, and they continued to hate him, and Joseph reserved the dreams in his heart. Yaakov. thank you. Yaakov, thank you, thank you. That's why I've got all of you here. You have to keep me on track, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> and here is actually where Kalina was talking earlier. In verse 22, where, where we spoke earlier of, was that a man or an angel that found him in the field? It says, and an angel of Yahweh found him wandering in the road toward the field, and he led him in the right direction. Okay, and now let's continue on in Yasher. But think about that. That's Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Yes. He led him in the right direction. Yes. That should be us. Well, and this is actually me. says it's an angel of Yahweh. Yeah. So it doesn't say the angel. So it could have been any of angels. Yeah, it, but this angel did lead him in the right direction. So let's go to uh, Yasher 42, and we're going to go 18 through 25. <clears throat> okay, and so what's happened at this point, they've already cast him into the pit. They're sitting around eating and drinking because they've cast him in the pit. In 18, and let me see. 
And the Midianites saw that Joseph was a, of a good-looking appearance and well-favored, and they desired him in their hearts and were urgent to purchase him from his brothers. And the sons of Yaakov listened to the Midianites, and they sold their brother Joseph to them for 20 pieces of silver. Guys, listen, it was actually Judah that, that decided to sell him. Who sold Yeshua? Judah. The tribe of Judah. Who Judas. sold Joseph? It was Judah. But who sold Joseph? Judah. Judah. Same, same tribe. You know what's interesting? Look at Zechariah. I just want us to look here real quick. I believe it's Zechariah 12, 11. I want us to look at something really quick. And I didn't mean to take this... this um, yeah, I didn't mean to take this, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> Zechariah, I think it's 12, 11 or 11, 12. It's one of the two. Can we read both? Let me look here. Okay. Okay, in Zechariah 12, 10, And I shall pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of favor and prayers, and they shall look on me, whom they pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and they shall be in bitterness over him as a bitterness on the firstborn. And in that day, the mourning in Jerusalem is going to be great, like the morning at Hadad Ramon in the valley of Megiddo, and the land shall mourn. Listen to this. Every clan by itself. How many clans were represented? Twelve. Ele well, there were actually ten were represented right there because the tribe of Benjamin, Benjamin wasn't out there with the rest of these boys. He was, uh, he, was, he was still back in the camp. But so there were ten tribes out there. So listen, every clan by itself, the clan of the house of David by itself, their, and their women by themselves, the clan of the house of Nathan by itself, and their women by themselves, and it goes on down the line. Every clan by itself is mourning what has happened to Yeshua. This is what he's talking about. And, and we see here, we see here that, um, so they sold their brother. Later on, we're, you're going to see their mourning over what they did. They regretted what they did, but it was too late. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for letting me take that little trail, and thank goodness it was the right verse. So that they were both sold, and um, here we go, and both were sold by Judah, the tribe of Judah. 20, they were going along the road, and the Midianites repented of what they had done, just like Judas, just exactly like Judas, in having purchased the young man, and one said to the other, what is this thing we have done in taking this youth from the Hebrews, who is of good appearance and well-favored? Perhaps this youth is stolen from the land of the Hebrews, and why then have we done this thing? If he should be sought for and found in our hands, we shall die through them. Okay, the Midianites. Do you remember what happened to the Midianites at Baal, Peor? They were, they were whooped, okay? Huh? <coughs> Just before they crossed over uh, the Jordan, there was an uprising in um, Baal Peor. Remember? Baal Peor. Okay, well, there was an uprising, and uh, there were many of the Midianites that died. The Midianites were, what, what did they do? And who, who are the Midianites? First of all, Moshe's wife was a Midianite. Where did, uh, where did Yaakov's mother come from? Midian. Midian. Huh? Midian. She was a Midianite. Okay? So these are their people. So they've got a close relationship with the Hebrews, right? Right? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Let's get us some coffee. Yeah. And wake up. So the Midianites have a relationship with the Hebrew people. They're looking at him. They're like, this is a good-looking Hebrew. Do we want to be found with him in our possession? They will get us. Now certainly, hardy and powerful <coughs> men have sold him to us. The strength of one whom you saw this day, perhaps they stole him from his land. 
with their might and with their powerful arm and have therefore sold him to us for the small value which we gave them. <clears throat> and while they were thus discussing together, they looked and saw the company of Ishmaelites which were coming at first and which the sons of Yaakov saw was advancing towards the Midianites and the Midianites said to each other, Come, let us sell this youth to the company of Ishmaelites who are coming toward us and we will take for him the little that we gave for him and we will be delivered from this evil. And they did so and they reached the Ishmaelites and the Midianites sold Joseph to Ishmael for 20 pieces of silver which they had given him for his brothers. And the Midianites went on their road to Gilead and the Ishmaelites took Joseph and they let him ride on the cam on one of the camels and they were leading him to where are the where are the Ishmaelites from? Israel. Egypt, right? So they're leading him to Egypt. And that's where Hagar was from, right? Okay, so now you see how the kind of confusion there, they, it did end up with the Ishmaelites, and the Ishmaelites are who sold him once they arrived in Egypt to Potiphar. Okay, now we're back in the scriptures. We're in chapter 38 <coughs> and verse 1. At that time, it came to be that, that Judah left his brothers. Okay, so we've been talking about Joseph all this time, right? It started with Joseph, and now suddenly, it's all about Judah. Judah just sold his brother, and he left his brothers. And this is a really interesting story. At that time, it came to be that Judah, Yehuda, left his brothers and turned aside to a man, an Adulamite, whose name was Hirah. And Yehuda saw that there was a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went into her. So she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Ur, which um, means awake, awake. In reverse, Ra, Ur's name, Ra, means what? Oh, I thought you were going to tell me. It means evil. Yeah, evil. Ra, evil. Okay, and she conceived again, and she bore a son, and she called his name Onan. And uh, his name means uh, complaint, <laughs> complaining. And she conceived yet again and bore a son and called his name Shelah. And he was, uh, he was at Kazib when she bore him, and his name means lies. And when Yehuda took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, her name was Tamar. Guys, I'm going to stop for just a second. Okay, what did Judah do? Who did he marry? Uh, Canaanite. Canaanite. Yeah. Okay, what did y'all tell Yaakov and Abraham? Yeah. Don't marry. Okay, and that's, that's going to be in 49, in uh, Genesis 49, 9 through 10. I want us to look at the scriptures and see what's going on here. Genesis 49, 10. We see, okay, first of all, I want you to see what the tribe of Judah is. The scepter shall not turn aside. This is the blessing over Judah. The scepter shall not turn aside from Judah, nor an inscriber, a lawgiver, from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him is the obedience of the people. Who was given the Torah? Judah. Okay, so. Judah. Okay, and what did that make him? The lawgiver. Yeah, the lawgiver. He was, he was made the lawgiver. <clears throat> this is a forever blessing, guys. So the tribe of Judah is to be the lawgiver. But Judah himself just married a Canaanite woman. So let's look at Deuteronomy 7. And Vicki, while we're going into the goes on over there, the tribe of Judah, I mean, this is showing what he did to cause the tribe of Judah to be where they are today. Joseph, tribe of Ephraim. I mean, Ephraim came from Joseph. Uh -huh. So you've got these two tribes. You're showing how they, that's where they are. Yes. Think about it. Yep. As, yep. We, as we're reading it. Yes, yes. That's interesting. Yep. I, it just hit me about <coughs> Judah and yep. this and, and the tribe of Judah. Yep. The lawgiver. The lawgiver. Yeah. And what did the lawgiver do, that, do to the Torah? Well, they hit, they uh, don't. They don't share it. They build a fence around it and they took it to themselves. Well, one thing they did, let me tell you the first thing they did was they removed the name of our Father. Mm -hmm. The name of, of the God. Dang. The El Elohim. So they removed it 6,000 times from Scripture. 
That's the first thing they did. And then they changed the, the Torah and they turned it into what? Talmud. The Talmud. Now, the Torah is called the Tanakh. That's the exact same Old Testament that's in every Bible. Now, some of the wording is different, but the Torah is the first five books. The whole Old Testament is the Tanakh. They took all of these writings and they added to what was already there and it turned they turned it into the Talmud and they gave new books and new names and and so it is an evil book. I don't recommend reading it. That's not the Torah. And it's not the, the law that we're we're but doing. They were the law here, but they were supposed to be sharing it. They were supposed to be teaching everyone. They were supposed to teach all of us the Torah. But what they did was they built a hedge around it, they hid it and they protected it and they added to it and they made it so hard that no one could keep Nobody it. Nobody wants to do it. That's it. So so the tribe of Judah was given the responsibility of taking care of guarding the Torah. I want you to look at this now. We go to um, Deuteronomy 7, 1 through 5. <clears throat> when Yahweh, your Elohim, brings you into the land which you are going to possess, he shall also clear away many nations before you, the Hadites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, mm -hmm. and the Perizzites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when Yahweh your Elohim gives them over to you, you shall strike them and put them under the ban. And when you put someone under the ban, what are you doing? Killing. You're, do, you're killing them. It's They're, like a genocide. It's, yeah. <laughs> it is like genocide. And guys, listen. So many people don't understand what had happened to these these different tribes, but what had happened is they had commingled with the Nephilim, and their blood and their bloodline was tainted, and this is why we don't have a, a mean, horrible father that is telling them to go in and just kill all the men, women, and children, kill everything, the animals. He's trying to get rid of this bloodline because it was distorting. It would distort and tear away Israel. Go ahead. Okay, so put them under the ban completely. He's completely, he's like, wipe them out completely. Make no covenant with them and show them no favor. And in verse three, he says, do not intermarry with them. And you do not give your daughter to his son. And you do not take his daughter for your son. For he turns your sons away from following me to serve other mighty ones. And then the displeasure of Yahweh shall burn against you and promptly destroy you. But this is what you are to do to them. Break down their slaughter places, smash their pillars, and cut down their ashram, and burn their carved images with fire. So what did he just say? Do not marry or give to in marriage your children to the Canaanites, right? What did Judah just do? He married a Canaanite woman. Okay, let's look at <clears throat> let's look at uh, well, I don't think we're going to look at this yet uh, because we haven't read this part yet, but we're going to look at what ha what happens here. But <clears throat> Okay, so I want you to understand Judah just defiled his bloodline, did he not? He had three children by the Canaanite woman. Okay, do you think there's going to be a Canaanite in the bloodline? No. Okay, look at look at Matthew one one. Okay, I'm I'm going to start in two. Abraham brought forth Yishak, and Yishak brought forth Yaakov, and Yaakov brought forth Yehuda and his brothers, and Yehuda brought forth Peretz and Zerah by Tamar. Okay, I want you to understand, this lineage that I'm giving you, this genealogy is who? It's Yeshua. This is Yeshua's bloodline, right? Okay, so there, you, be there, there cannot be Canaanite bloodline in here. But Judah went out and he did what? He married a Canaanite. So look how Yah takes care of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so Yehuda took a wife for Ur, his, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Yehuda's firstborn, was evil in the eyes of Yahweh, 
and Yahweh took his life. And Yehuda said to Onan, Go into your brother's wife and marry her and raise up an heir to your brother. Okay, guys, listen. This was a, a ancient Near East tradition and a custom. If a woman was married to a man and he died, his brother came, stood in, and he had an heir for his brother. Okay, and Onan knew that the offspring would not be his heir, and it came to be when he went into his brother's wife that he spilled on the ground his seed, lest he should give an offspring to his brother. Guys, that's a curse. So what he did displeased Yahweh, so he took his life too. And then Yehuda said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow in your father's house until my son, Shelah, is grown. For he said, lest he also die as his brothers did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Now, according to Yasher, the book of Yasher, Tamar is, <coughs> excuse me, Tamar is Shem's granddaughter. Who is Shem? Shem is a Melchizedek. He was Noah's first, firstborn, probably. Uh -huh. And um, he was a Melchizedek that met Abraham in, uh, when he returned from battle. So she is a granddaughter of the high priest. Okay? Okay, Yehuda said to um, his, his daughter-in-law, he said, Remain a widow in your father's house until my son Shelah has grown. For he said, Lest he die, as his brothers did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house, along with Shem. And after a long time, the daughter of Shua, Yehuda's wife, died, and Yehuda was comforted, and went up to shear sheep, to shear sheep at Timnah, he and his friend, Hera the Adulamite. And it was reported to Tamar, saying, See, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. And she took off her widow's garments, covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat at the entrance to Enayim, which was on the way to Timnah. Now, guys, she, she is, Judah supposes her to be a prostitute, mm -hmm. but it does not say here that she was dressed as a prostitute. She took off her black garments of widowhood, and she wrapped herself in a veil. So he, he couldn't see who she was, but he supposed her. And she was not he supposed her to be a prostitute, but she was not. Probably the way she was dressed and where she was. And well, it didn't say she was dressed as a prostitute. Oh. He's just assuming that she was. Okay. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given to him as a wife. And Yehuda saw her, and he supposed her. He reckoned her for a whore, for she had covered her face. And he turned aside to her by the way and said, Please, let me come into you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What do you give me to come into me? And he said, Let me send you a young goat from my flock. And she said, Do you give me a pledge until you send it? And so he said, What pledge shall I give you? And she said, Your seal, your cord, and your staff that is in your hand. And he gave them to her and went into her, and she conceived by him. Now listen, guys. <coughs> Would she have a reason to need any of these articles? She couldn't have used these in any form or fashion. So this was his authority. It was like his ID, right? His cord, his seal, his staff, all of these were his identification. They were important to him, but she couldn't have used them. So he wasn't worried about handing them over to her. He thought she'll surely hold on to these. They're of no use to her. When my man brings her back the, the young goat, She'll trade them for him. And so uh, she arose and went away and removed her veil and put on the garments of her widowhood. And Yehuda sent the young goat by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he did not find her. And he asked the men to that place, saying, Where is the cult prostitute who was beside the way to Enayim? And they said, There was no cult prostitute in this place. So what they knew, there had never been a prostitute sitting there. And that was not the custom there. And he returned to Yehuda and said, I've not found her. And the men of that place also said that there was no cult prostitute in this place. And Yehuda said, 
Let her take them for herself, lest we become despised. For I sent this young goat, and you have not found her. And it came to be about three new moons, three months. Three new moons represent three new moons that were spotted, right? <clears throat> After that, Yehuda was informed, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, <clears throat> has whored, and see, she has conceived by whoring. And Yehuda said, Bring her out and let her be burned. I want us to look at Yasher because I'm going to show you where it says that she was the daughter of a high priest. In Yasher 4523, chapter 4523 of Yasher, Yes. Are you there? Uh, yep. Okay. And Seth is reading from the Sefer. Okay. Fucking. You are not there. Yeah, I am. <laughs> All right. And in those days, Yehuda went out to the house of Shem and took Tamar, the daughter of Elam, the son of Shem, for a woman for his first for his firstborn herd. Okay. So. Oh, We've just established that Elam, excuse me, was Tamar's father, and he was the son of Shem. So she is a granddaughter of the high priest. Granddaughter, listen, grand, grandparents, your grandchildren are your children. Mm -hmm. You call them your children. You have sons and daughters when you have grandchildren. Okay, now I want us to look at the Levitical law concerning this. Levi, Leviticus 21.9. <clears throat> So what, what Judah knew is that Tamar was the daughter of a high priest. And according to the law in uh, Leviticus 21, 9, okay. and, and this is what it reads, yeah. And when the daughter of any priest profanes herself by whoring, she profanes her father, and she is burned with fire. Okay? This is the law. And it's the death for a high priestess. So Judah knew she was the daughter of the high priest. And in his eyes, she had been whoring because she was not married, right? His, he, she was supposed to be with his son. He hadn't sent his son. Okay, <clears throat> so we've established why he said go burn her. When she was brought out, she sent word to her father-in-law saying, By the man to whom these belong, I am pregnant. And she said, please examine whose these are, the seal, the cord, and the staff. And Yehuda examined and said, she has been more righteous than I, because I did not give her to Shelah, my son, and he never knew her again. And it came to be at that time for giving birth that, see, two twins were in her womb. So we have more twins. There were lots of twins in this family. And it came to be when she was giving birth that one put out his hand, and the other midwife took a scarlet, scarlet thread and bound it on his hand, saying, This one came out first. And it came to be as he drew back his hand that see his brother came out. And she said, How did you break through? But this breach be upon you. So his name was called Peretz. Uh, and in Matthew 1, 3, that's where we just read that Peretz is in the lineage of Yeshua. And guys, listen. That lineage came from Judah, the one that was the lawgiver, who was the, the lineage of King David, and Shem, the Zadik, the holy righteous one of Israel, the first high priest who was not of the lineage of who? Levi. All the other priests were from the, the lineage of, of Levi after that. He was the only one that was not from that lineage. Okay. And afterward, his brother came out who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and so his name was called Zerah. So the firstborn is where the lineage came from. Isn't that a beautiful story? So he, the lineage couldn't have come from a king and not. It was not of Yah. In fact, there was a curse. There's actually a curse uh, for that marriage, and that would be in Genesis 9.25. Um, let me see. <clears throat> we were talking about last night how Yob does things. Yes. It's never a normal way. No. It's always his way. His way. Yeah. And it's not anything the way we could figure out or 
I mean, it's, it's just his way. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem right unto man. No. But it's the way it has to be. Yes, and how many times do we ask y'all, you know, your will be done, Father, your yeah. will be done. And then when it happens, we're like, <laughs> what are you doing? What was that? <laughs> what are you, yeah. Or, or listen, in the middle of it, in the middle of that prayer being answered, we're crying out going, take me out of this. What is going on here? And in the end, we're like, wow. You see, it? Yeah. You see the end result. Yeah. So, so guys, what does that tell us? What does he tell us? Stand. When you're in the middle of those trials, we stand and we continue to stand. Because listen, who does he try? Us. Who does he try? The loved ones, the ones, the, the lost sheep. The That's right. Does he try those he doesn't love? No. No. So those who are not following Torah. And he's trying us to try to strengthen us and get us where we need to be so we could be the people that he's called us to be. Listen, I, I mean, I, I know that I'm flipping around right here, but. Bless you. <clears throat> yeah, bless you, bless you. Again, hey, again. You Thank you. You want one of my green things? Okay. These are really good. You can't drink water after it, though, because it will burn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's like, do I or don't I? What is she giving you? She's taking it. Okay. Listen, guys, in Hebrews 12, 7, <clears throat> if you endure discipline, Elohim is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? But, <laughs> Listen, guys, if you're not a son, you're not being observant to Torah, right? If you're not observing Torah, if you're not observing Shabbat, if you're not honoring the Sabbath and spending it with Yahweh, he's not going to try you. No. You're not his son. So, Mickey? Yes, ma'am? The Torah is Yeshua. That was scary. Yeah. It was scary. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. The Torah is Yeshua. <laughs> So if we honor Yeshua, we are honoring the Torah. That's right. If we're honoring Torah, we've got to, it's got to be Yeshua. It's, it's all the same. It's one, it's one in the same. It's one in the same. Psalms 119 and 142. So if you're without discipline, of which you have all become sharers, then you are illegitimate and you are not sons. If you're, if you're disobedient, you're not a son. No worries about being tested and tried because that's not going to happen. It's not even necessary. Oi. Okay, 925. This is where the curse on the Canaanites came from. Seth, you said you were there? Uh, yes, ma'am. Are you still there? Yes, ma'am. Got it. <coughs> and he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall be unto his brethren. Sorry, I read out of the seat. Uh, okay, that's okay. So, cursed be Canaan. Why did he curse Canaan? Because of what happened? Cain killed this him. is Noah. And Noah is cursing Canaan because of what? He looked up on his nakedness. He looked on his nakedness. Oh, oh, in the yeah, right. There you go. Yeah. So because of this, the Canaanites were cursed. And, and it's his grandson. It is his grandson. It is his grandson. And I lost my place in Genesis. So, okay. Page 43. Thank you. No, 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 yeah. 42. I don't know why I don't trust you. No, I'm kidding. I trust you. <laughs> Okay, so so now we come to another, the rest of the story on Joseph, right? And we, we come to the, the, the answer to the question of why was Potiphar's wife so enamored by Joseph, right? Okay, so we're in 39.1, <clears throat> and Joseph had been taken down to Mitzram, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, a Mitzram, brought him, bought him, from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down from there. And it came to be that Yahweh was with Joseph and, and he became a prosperous man and was in the house of his master, the Mitzrayan. And his master saw that Yahweh was with him and that Yahweh made all he did prosper in his hand. Guys, this is, <clears throat> this reminds you of the story of Yaakov when he was in Laban's house, what, doesn't it? Everything that Laban had, his sheep, grew large, his cattle expanded. He was blessed in every way, wasn't he? Because of what? The favor on Yaakov. Same thing's happening with Joseph. Potiphar's like, wow, Yah's with him. He's very, he's highly favored. So Joseph found favor in his eyes and he served him and he appointed him over his house 
and gave him gave into his hand all that he had. Potiphar literally gave everything over to him. He said, I trust you. Everything that you do is just perfect. Take everything. His whole household was under Joseph. And it came to be from the time that he appointed him over his house and all that he had that Yahweh blessed the Mitzrayans house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of Yah was on all that he had in the house and in the field. How many times do we see that, guys? How many times do we see that Yah's blessings on a man go to thousands of generations? Mm -hmm. The curse is gone how many? Three to five generations. The short term. But the blessings go to thousands. And it's not just to the thousands of generations. He's blessing those who are associated with him. I mean, this man didn't, didn't even kin to him. Lavon, at least his daughters were married to Yaakov, right? Lot, Lot, Lot found favor in, in Yah's eyes because of Abraham. Here, we've got the favor of, of Yah on Yosef. And now Potiphar, a Mitzrayan, is being highly blessed, even in his field. So we're in uh, chapter 39 of Genesis, and we're in verse 6. And he left in Yosef's hand all that he had, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. He didn't have to worry about anything. Can you imagine being able to trust someone that much? All he knew is, I know I ate this much bread and meat last night and everything else I don't worry. Yosef's got it all covered. And he just came in. I mean, he wasn't even one of his mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Egyptian That's right. Parties. He just came in, so to trust him, it had to be God. He was a Hebrew man. Mm -hmm. And Yosef was handsome in form and handsome in appearance. And after these events, it came to be that his master's wife lifted up her eyes to Yosef and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has given into my hand all that he has. No one is greater in this house than I, and he has not withheld whatever from me but you, because you are his wife, and how shall I do this great evil and sin against Elohim? He's not even talking about against Potiphar. He's talking about how can I do this against my, my Elohim, against my God, against, against Yahweh. And it came to be as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not listen to her, to lie with her, and to be with her. And it came to be on a certain day when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house were inside that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And it came to be when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside. <coughs> Excuse me. That she called to the men of her house and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. <coughs> <coughs> Let's go to Yasher. Chapter 44. <coughs> <coughs> And I'm going to get um, Valerie to read. What verse you want to start with? 26 through 33. Okay. Yes, you're 44, 26 through 33. And when she, and when she could not... <coughs> this is... Uh, this is and when she could not persuade him and her soul was still fixed on him, her desire threw her into a grave sickness. All the women of Egypt came to visit her. Now we're talking about uh, Potiphar's wife. All the women of Egypt came to visit her and said to her, Why are you in this declining state? You lack nothing. Certainly your husband is a great and esteemed prince in the sight of the king. Should you lack anything of what your heart desires? Silica answered them, saying, This day it should be made known to you from where this disorder comes, which you see in me. And she commanded her maidservants to prepare food for all the women. She made a banquet for them, and all the women ate in the house of Zillica. And she gave them eyes to peel the citrons to eat them. And she commanded that they should dress Joseph in false garments, that he should appear before them. And Joseph came before their eyes, and all the women looked on Joseph. 
and could not take their eyes off him. They all cut their hands with the knife that they had in their hands, and all the citrus were in their hands were filled with blood. And they knew not what they had done, but they continued to look at the beauty of Joseph and did not turn their eyelids from him. Zillica saw what they had done, and she said to them, What is this work that you have done? Look, I gave you citrons to eat, and you have all cut your hands. And all the women saw their hands, and truly they were full of blood, and their blood flowed down on their garments. They said to her, This slave in your house has overcome us, and we could not turn our eyelids from him on account of his beauty. She said to them, Certainly this happened to you in this moment that you looked at him, and you could not contain yourselves from him. How then can I refrain what he is constantly in my house? And I see him day after day going in and out of my house. <laughs> How then can I keep from declining or even from perishing on account of this? Okay. That's it. So guys, he was so pretty that these win- women nearly cut their hands off. Good job. <laughs> yeah. I must have the job. I'm like. He must have been pretty. He must have been just drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. It talks about his eyes. I didn't get to hear you read. It didn't say that those eyes. Oh, in one area in here, yeah. his eyes were like that. There was something special about his eyes. Hmm. Oh, here it is. Zilka, this is in eighteen. Zilka said to him, "How beautiful are your eyes, with which you have." dazzled all the inhabitants of Egypt, men and women. He said to her, how beautiful they are while we are alive. Should you behold them in the grave, sir, you would would move away from them. So Joseph did what? He did everything he could to try to keep out of her grasp. She found one day when there was no one inside, and what did she do? She plotted, she took advantage of it, and now since she can't have him, what does she want? Off with your head. No, I'm kidding. She wasn't the queen. <laughs> yeah. But she was going to send him to where? Prison. To prison. Okay. And that's where he went. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. But, but, but guys, listen. It was all listen. in y'all's plan. Listen, yeah. uh, listen to me, guys. We laugh at this. And, and really, it is funny that they were still in pitch- Citron. He went to jail for being pretty? Huh? He went to jail for being pretty? No. Because he, he went <laughs> to jail because he, he was too pretty. <laughs> pretty much so. He was so pretty, he went to jail. Lock, lock him up. Uh, but guys, listen. We laugh, but how many of us do stupid things out of the beauty that we see that we want? The physical beauty. Do we need it? We go out of our way. We do. We go out of our way. We do stupid things. He went to jail because he would not stand against his Elohim. That's it. Our Elohim. Uh, And And he knew what he he was. He stood stood fast. Uh, And that's what he went to jail for. He went to jail for standing fast. But her <laughs> lust, her coveting, that's what caused him to go to jail. He also wouldn't have gone against Potiphar. You know, here this man has trusted him with everything. So her sin led him to go to jail. Basically. He was innocent, just like yeah. Yeshua. Listen, the tribe of Judah, thank you for bringing that up. The tribe of Judah was jealous over Yeshua. Why? <coughs> Because he's a, the king he, of all kings. He was gathering all these followers. Well, if if you're following Yeshua, you're not going to be following the Talmud. Yep. You can't follow. Listen, guys, you cannot follow both. You can't. It's one or the other. It's one or the other. Excuse me, because I've got a big old lozenger in my mouth. <laughs> and they are huge. Um, hello, Kalul. Nice to see you. Hope things are well in Africa. Um. So I, I, I just found that verse fascinating, that he was so pretty. Mm-hmm. <coughs> okay. And we go forward. <laughs> that was it. That was weird. weird. That was him. <laughs> I thought I heard a child in here. Okay, we are in uh, chapter 39, verse 15. And it came to be when he heard that I lifted, heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. And she kept his garment with her until her master came home. And she spoke to him these same words, saying, The Hebrew servant which you brought to us into me, to 
whom you brought to us came into me to mock me. <coughs> so it came to be as I lived. Excuse me. I may have to take this lozenger out. I'm spitting it all over the place. And so it came to be as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. And it came to be when his master heard, when her, his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did it to me according to these words, that his displeasure burned. And then Yosef's master took him and put him into the prison, where <clears throat> a place where the sovereign's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. But Yahweh was with Yosef and extended loving commitment to him, and he gave him favor in the eyes of the prison guard. Guys, everywhere he went, Yah was with him. He had the favor of Yah everywhere. It didn't matter where he went. He had it. You know, even when he was in the pit, in the book of Yahshua, it said the pit was full of snakes and scorpions. Yet when Yosef fell in there, they all went back in their holes. And that, that's pretty good favor. I want that kind of favor, right? I bet Kalina does too, but out there cleaning yesterday, she finds a snake. I'm like, snake? Scorpions and snakes. <coughs> and the prison warden gave into the hand of Yosef all of the prisoners who were in the prison, and whatever was done there was his doing. And the prison warden did not look into any point that was under Yosef's hand, because Yahweh was with him, and whatever he did, Yahweh made it prosper. Nice. That, that is such a testimony uh, as to Yah's favor for being obedient. Now, I think that by this point, Yosef is probably not taunting, him, uh, la la lauding himself to be above everyone else. Don't you? He I mean, it. being put in a pit would pretty much bring you down. Right. Yeah, but he knows it spiritually. Mm -hmm. yeah. That right. humbled him. Yeah. Right. I, I bet him. it did, yeah. So that's what y'all used to get him where he needed to be. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, and guys, what we didn't <coughs> read, and, and listen, the story of Yosef, did you read it, Bonnie, in the Yasher? No. The, the full story of Yosef and his captivity really is beautiful because they actually tried to encamp uh, where his mother, Rachel, was buried yes. outside of Bethlehem, and he ran to her grave. Crying to her. Mm -hmm. I was just reading that. So it, it is a beautiful uh, story. Well, don't you think that uh, Joseph spent a lot of time with his father, Yaakov, who, who told him and uh, taught him what he knew? He had to have for him to know all of this. Yes. So he learned, and he, he, you know, even though he was haughty and prideful, we all have our shortcomings. He was 17 years old when he was sold, okay? So at 17, Haley, Haley's 16. At 16, 17, you're old enough to know right from wrong yeah. and be able to make choices. Right. Now, at first, he didn't choose well. <laughs> and that caused, but, but listen, Yah uses everything. everything. Everything that goes on, he uses every bit of it to achieve his ultimate goal. Exactly. Everything. Guys, everything we've been through, listen, we make bad choices, we end up in bad places. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, I think it's in on over the Genesis that Joe, it's used what the devil means for evil, Yah uses it for good. And, Always. And that's what I think is somewhere in the book. Yeah. It, it is, but guys, listen. What we also saw in the book of Adam and Eve, Hasatan doesn't have a free hand to just come about and do whatever he wants to anyone in here. He, he doesn't have that free hand. Yah, well, Yahweh has to allow it. But then we see that he did, that rascal did do a few things that Yah did not give him permission, such as the temptation with the fruit. So right. I say that, and then again. Well, he has a certain amount of reign here. I mean, he is the prince of this air, but mm -hmm. he can just do so much. The thing is, we have free will to right. choose huh? that. Or that. Guys, if you don't know what the <coughs> word tells you in making these choices, are you going to make good choices or bad choices? If you don't know the word, if you don't know the word, you're going to be very gonna, poor. They're going to be poor every single time. Good answer, Sean. Yes, they're going to be of the world <laughs> and not of him. 
Because if you don't know him. It'd be like Potiphar's wife. Yeah. Do whatever you can because you've got to have this beautiful man uh, to be your whatever she was going <laughs> to. <laughs> whatever he was going to be. Trophy. His trophy wife. Tro trophy husband. Parade him. She had paraded him in front of all of her yes. women friends and it was going to be kind of a trophy. Like well, and, and did I, I went off on a coughing spell. <laughs> Did you get to read where she said where she was just laying around and sad and moping no, and she wouldn't eat? Mm -hmm. So all of that was taking place before she had this Poor party. Woman. Because everybody was like, Oh, Jennifer, you you've got to eat and she was like I can't. <laughs> I'm heart sick. His eyes are like ocean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his eyes are like the ocean, the blue Caribbean. So guys, she had to invite all her girlfriends over. She was like, look, y'all don't know what I'm going through, okay? Come on over here. I want you to eat with me. I want you to look at this guy and see what's going on here, okay? Because this is why I'm sick. But, but Yasher really, if you get a chance, read through the book of Yasher. Um, and, and most of the, the stories about Yosef are, I think they start in 40, 41, and they go, <clears throat> they go on for a ways. And we're going to be reading more stories, but some of this I didn't think was necessary to include. Okay. We are in chapter 40, and now we're in prison. And again, he's got all the favor. He gets to call all the shots in prison. He's taking care of all the prisoners. Nobody's even ruling over him. He didn't really even have a boss. Isn't that crazy? He's got all the commissary. <laughs> He got the whole commissary. <laughs> What's a commissary? commissary not getting no. It's not an area of brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just went south. Let's go. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but he does have rule over who gets what, uh, who gets to do what. He, he's calling all the shots. Okay, 41. Chapter 40, verse 1. And after these events, it came to be that the cupbearer and the baker of the sovereign of Mitzram sinned against their master, the sovereign of Mitzram. And I believe there was a plot. Did y'all read that in Yasher? I'm going by memory from over a year ago. I believe there was a plot. <clears throat> okay. And Pharaoh was wroth with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. So he put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison, the place where Yosef was a prisoner. And the captain of the guard put Yosef in charge of them, and he served them. So they were in confinement for some time. And then the cupbearer and the baker of the sovereign of Mitzram, who were confined in the prison, dreamed a dream, both of them, each man's dream in one night, and each man's dream with its own interpretation. And Yosef came into them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers, who were with him in confinement of his master's house saying, why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, we each have dreamed a dream and there's no one to interpret it. And Yosef said to them, do not interpretations belong to Elohim? Relate them to me. <laughs> Listen, what did he just do? He just started a prison ministry, <laughs> didn't he? Look at First Peter three eighteen, And I'm not even gonna turn there. Peter. <coughs> So, 1 Peter 3.18. I'm going to turn there. <laughs> First one there reads? Yes, please. First one there reads. <gasps> There's not a 3.18. No. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Even Messiah wants oh, I mean, to for sin, the righteous, for the unrighteous, to bring you to Elohim. Having been put to death, indeed, in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and proclaimed unto the spirits in prison. So, even Yeshua declared the good news, the gospel, to those in prison. And guys, listen, there's a lot of prisoners that aren't in jail. Aren't yep. there? Yes. You said that aren't? They aren't. Yeah. They've right. got we we we've, we've all got our chains somewhere. Yeah, he came to set the captives free, didn't he? Yes. Okay. So yep. here you go. Yosef, first prison ministry. Right? Mm -hmm. 
So the cupbearer related his dream to Joseph and said to him, See, in my dream, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded. Its blossoms shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. So I took the grapes and pressed them into the Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in the Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days, Pharaoh is going to lift up your hand and restore you to your place, and you shall put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former ruling when you were his cupbearer. But remember me when it is well with you, and please show loving commitment to me and mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. <laughs> Take me with you. <laughs> For truly I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews, and also I have done naught that they should put me into the dungeon. And the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good. And he, he said to Joseph, he said, I also, had, I, I also was in my dream and saw three baskets were on my head. And in the uppermost basket, all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. And the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. And Joseph answered and said, this is an interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Mm. Starting out pretty good, isn't it? You said three baskets on our head? <laughs> three baskets, and the three baskets are three days. Oh. Yet within three days, Pharaoh is going to lift off your head <laughs> from you and hang you on a tree. And the birds shall eat your flesh from you. And on the third day, Pharaoh's birth, birthday, it came to be that he made a feast for all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the, the chief cupbearer and of the chief baker among his servants, and he restored the chief cupbearer cup to his post of cupbearers again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them, and the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. So that was very sad, but it's always in Yah's timing. He does eventually remember, doesn't he? What is it, 11 years later? Yeah. It, finally he goes, oh, a dream. I remember I had a dream once. Okay, so now we're going to Amos, and we're going to chapter 2, verse Amos. 6. Amos, Amos. The cookie man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That was 6 something, right? 2-6. Oh. 3-8. No, I'm page in page. No, dude. Oh, 6-11. 99. Are you in the Seifer? Yeah. Okay. Can we read it? Sure. Is it got him? It's false. <coughs> Thus says Yahuwah, for three transgressions of Yashorel, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because they sold the righteous for silver, and the poor for a pair of shoes. That pant after the dust of the earth, on the head of the poor, and turn aside the way of the meek. And a man and his father will go in unto the same maid, and profaneth my holy name. Wow. That's pretty much what Judah did, guys. I mean, he sold uh, Joseph, then he went into the same girl that his sons had had. Go ahead. And they may, excuse me, and they lay themselves down upon the uh, upon clothes that laid to the pledge by every altar, and they drank the wine of the condemned in the house of their Elohim. Short, sure, you know, the lowercase Elohim. Yet destroyed I the Emirah before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above, and his roots from beneath. Also I brought you up from the land of Mitzrayim, and led you forty years throughout the wilderness, to possess the land of Amari. <coughs> and I raised you up of your sons and pro and, excuse me, and I raised you up for sons of your sons, for prophets, and of your young men, not serene. It is not even it is it is not even is it not even thus, O ye children of Yashorel, says Yahuwah, but 
ye gaveth the Nazarene wine to drink and commanded the prophet, saying, Prophesy not. Behold, I am pressed under you as a cart is pressed that is full of sheaves. Therefore the fly that shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not strengthen his, his force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. Neither he stand that handles the bow. <clears throat> and he that is swift of foot shall not deliver himself. Neither shall he that rides the horse deliver himself. And he that is courageous among the mighty shall flee away naked in the, the last days, says Yahuwah. Heareth the words, this word that Yahuwah has spoken against you, O children of Israel, <coughs> against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Mitzrayim, saying, You only have I known all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you, all your in, in, punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? That's a good one. Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a, will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? Can a bird fall in the snare upon earth when no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and shall take in nothing at all? Shall a chauffeur be blown in the city and a people not be afraid? Shall there be an evil in a city Yahuwah has not done yet? Surely Adonai Yahuwah will, will do nothing, but he reveals his, set, his secret as to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared, who will not fear? Adonai Yahuwah has spoken, who can but prophesy? So guys, listen, <clears throat> what was the house of Israel doing? Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> well, that, they were not keeping Torah. The, the covenant. Yeah. The Torah. <laughs> Where is the covenant? Exodus 19. Yes, Valerie, that was so good. You you're, you're remembered. I'm so proud of you. I am too. <laughs> it's Exodus 19. We're going to read it real quick. Three. And Moshe went up to Elohim, and Yahweh called to him from the mountain, saying, This is what you are to say to the house of Yaakov, and declare to the children of Yisrael. You have seen what I did to the Mitzrites and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. And now if, listen to me, yeah. if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a reign of priests and a set-apart nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. That is the covenant, guys. So you come over here. What did they do? They, they broke it. And they were so eager to say, we'll do it. And it was right after they, again, well, as, as we do. It, it's, it's just like you, you have two children, and you, you tell Johnny, Johnny, would you go mow the grass? Yes, sir, I'll go do it. And uh, he doesn't go do it. He goes off and he goes to town with uh, his friends. And they, they tell uh, Sammy, Sammy, go mow the grass. No, I don't want to do it. I've got other things to do. But yet, he goes and mows it. Guys, listen. We may not want to in the beginning, but it's important that we obey the, the commandments, that we obey the covenant. And, and I love how he says, listen, he says he doesn't, he doesn't do anything unless he reveals it to his prophets. Everything has been revealed to the prophets in, in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament. Everything. And so it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't surprise us. Where, where are we living today? Listen, confusion abounds today. Well, why would he say it and give it to us? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. So why do we think that the first part's gone? I mean, it's because it very plainly. That is what somebody's teaching our preachers. Mm -hmm. The first part, the first part of this book is gone. It's not even the first half. It's about three quarters. But he didn't. He didn't tear it out. Nope. It's still there. It's still here. <laughs> but but guys, listen. Where we are today, and every day, I believe it more and more. Watching these, mm. watching these politicians on TV, oh. 
will really make you believe. Look at Deuteronomy 28. Do it in evil. 20. <clears throat> These are the curses of not being obedient to Torah, okay? And, and if you can't think of one person that this verse reminds you of, then you don't know anybody. <laughs> okay, so cursed are you when you come in and cursed are you when you go out. Yahweh sends on you the curse. And he calls it the curse. The confusion and the rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the evil of your doings of which you have forsaken me. Listen. Did Yeshua die and offer grace to all the world? What is that grace? It's salvation. It's, it's the ability to walk it out like he did. He came and he showed us how to do it. Without him, we can't walk it out. Without Yeshua, it doesn't matter if you walk it out, you still can't get in. I mean, we could walk it out, but it, but it wouldn't, Why? it wouldn't, it would mean nothing. It would come to naught if we didn't have it. That's you know? exactly it. You can walk it out, but without Yeshua, you, he, is, he is the door. He's the way, he's the truth, he is the light. He's a path. On that door and he'd say, ah, oh, well, you didn't have a relationship with me. I don't know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what did he no. say to the foolish virgins who weren't prepared for his coming? Sorry, the door's already <coughs> closed. Closed, locked. The, clo the door is closed and locked. Well, well, we did uh, miracles in your name. Oh, Lord, Lord, we did miracles in your name. First of all, that's not his name. <laughs> What's his name? Sure. His name's Yahweh. His name's Yeshua. His name is Yahweh. Yahusha. Yes. <coughs> he is an Elohim. But his name is Yahweh. So some people say Yahuwah. Some people say Yahweh. But guys, he does have a name, and there is great power in his name. And Yeshua said, I, I have shared your name with them. Doesn't he? He's revealed the name of the Father to us. Yes. So. He said, don't make it common. Don't right. make it common. Okay. And really, Matthew 1 was really the um, genealogy. Is that what you had? <clears throat> it's what I had. This, and so, this is in. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The first part is Acts 7. And it says 9 through 16, but the first part is what really. So Acts 7 9. Uh -huh. I think that way it says. Oh. Seven, you want me to read it or you want to read it? I ain't got there yet. I'm just heading that way. You don't need to. You're too you're having trouble. Okay, 7 9. 7 9. I'm going to turn this around there so they can see the lovely Miss Valerie Hathaway. Oh. <laughs> Acts 7 verse 9 and the ancestors becoming jealous so Joseph into Mithraim but Elohim was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh sovereign of Mithraim and he appointed him governor over Mithraim and all his house and then it goes on after yeah, that it, it gets on into yeah. the next four Not where we are, but it's just showing there that uh, he gave him favor okay so guys where does favor come from yeah. Obedience and from y'all, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, favor can come to you because your parent or your grandparent was obedient. Even more than that, listen, favor can go to your children and your grandchildren yeah. because of your obedience. It can go to Bailey, <laughs> Bailey Bell back there. So, so Baxter. it is so important. <laughs> Guys, listen, obedience is so very important. <clears throat> The lovely Miss Valerie didn't want to be on the video any longer. But but the obedience that we offer up to Yah, that, that's that's what we are born to do. Exactly. We're born to honor him on the Sabbath. We're born to be obedient to his commandments. That's who we are. We eat what is food. Leviticus eleven tells us what's food and what's not food. 
So we eat food, right? Yes. It's because it's who we are. Are we Jewish? No. We are followers of the way, and the way is the word, guys. The, the, the word without any of the doctrines of men, without any of the traditions of men, that nullify it. I'm going to tell you, every tradition that man has come up with will nullify the word of Yah. Do you not know that? Yes. <clears throat> One of my girls asked me this week, she said, huh, we, we forgot to send out Christmas cards. I said, there better not be one Christmas card that is sent out from this company. You know, if you want to send a Hanukkah card, we can do that. But Hanukkah, guys, is, is not a commanded feast either. There are seven commanded feasts. This is a tough time to be in this walk. This time of the year is tough to be in this walk, especially if you're new to this walk. Because it is a walk, huh? I know. The Christmas songs, we're like, we like their Christmas yeah. songs. There's some of them that are just winter songs, like I snow know. songs. Uh-huh. And I'm trying Fox to find some of those. Snow, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does it have anything about Christmas in it? No. no. We're, we're going to gather some music together because we're going to have a Hanukkah party. So let's gather our favorite songs. I keep thinking that the Maccabees are going to come out with some music songs. Yeah. Sure. Some, some the Maccabees. The Maccabees. <laughs> Some music songs. Did I say Hanukkah songs? Nikki, about the Sabbath. Yah set the Sabbath up in the very first book of Genesis. I mean, it's there. You can't change it. You're going to read it, aren't you? I'm going to read. What I'm going to read oh. is... But I mean, he said there, yes. the seventh day, he rested. And all throughout it, it's preserved. That's oh. it. Well, and guys, listen. I mean, I hate to keep harping on that, but it, it is. Well, that's the very first thing that is listed. If you want to look at the, um, the festivals that our fathers, listen, our father does want us to, to celebrate. He wants us to remember. He wants us to do the festivals. But not one of them is called Christmas. Not one of them is called Ishtar. I'm sorry, I meant Easter. <laughs> Guys, listen, we have brought traditions from some other countries. In the 1800s, Charles yes. Spurgeon preached against Christmas. It was against the law. It was against the law. So listen, how did something that was against the law in the 1800s? Now, you are a bad person if you say, we're not going to celebrate. Money. I don't celebrate Christmas. Money. 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 Right. The retail business. The, it is a retail business. <laughs> so I want you to listen. These are, these are Yaw's festivals. If I'm going to celebrate anything, I'm going to celebrate his festivals, and it is in Leviticus 23. <clears throat> and Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The appointed times of who? Yeah. Yahweh, of him, of our Father, which you are to proclaim as set apart gatherings. And he goes on to say, They're my, my appointed times are these. Six days. Listen, the very first thing that he talks about is Sabbath. Right. That is an appointed day. Six days you work. The seventh day you spend with him. Six days work is done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest. A set-apart gathering. You do no work. It is a Sabbath to Yahweh in all your dwellings. So even listed with the festivals, right off the bat is Sabbath. That's today. The first one. Yes, it's first. Before he even gets to his festivals, this is his day. Oh, this but is... those were for the Jews. Listen, did you hear Dennis? Wait. Oh, that was for the Jews. <laughs> okay, so guys, there, this doesn't say anything about this Jew being a Jewish festival. No. Did that hurt? It says it's his. It says that it is the festivals of our Father, Abba, Yahweh, to meet with us. Yahweh. We don't know how his name's pronounced. It's a yud heh vav That's what we know. Do we know how it's pronounced? We don't. We really don't. We, we, we do our best to say it the way we think it is. We have people in here. Some say Yahweh. Some say Yahuwah. I say Yahweh. Yahweh. And so, and so <laughs> we're doing our best. But listen, he has his own appointed days that he does expect everyone. These are 
these are forever <laughs> appointed days. So we go after <clears throat> these six days of work. He says, these are the appointed times of Yahweh, set apart gatherings, which you are to proclaim at your appointed times. So he's got the first, in the first new moon, which will be the first month, and it's not January. It's going to be around April, May, sometime around there. You've got Pesach, which is Passover. It has absolutely nothing to do with a bunny rabbit and colored eggs, and that irritates the fool out of me that people gather at sunset, or at sunrise, excuse me, sunrise service to honor Ishtar. That, guys, it has nothing to do with our Savior. It has nothing to do with Him. If I get a bunny, lay eggs. eggs. An egg. Well, because, oh, wait, it's because it's a fertility right. bunny. Yes. No. no, it's all symbols of fertility. So, guys, I'm not, I'm not even going to go further because I'm going to end up angry. Okay. And I don't want to be angry. He's losing. So, but, guys, I do want to say this. You know, I was angry when, I, when my eyes were open to the truth. And it made me, it, it, and it, it is, it, it, it hurts, I mean, that. We People dishonored. It, it hurt me that I dishonored my, my father's will and his commandments for so many years of my life, thinking I was doing good. Listen, Christmas feels good. It feels right. It's pretty. It brings warm, tingly feelings inside. It costs a bunch of money. We usually spend all year paying off the debt. Yep. But listen, guys, it is, there is nowhere in Scripture you're going to find where he says, honor the birthday of my Savior. Well, it's first, not his of all, first of all, it's not his birthday. Right. Second of all, there's no command to honor that date. If you no. do your research on Christmas, <clears throat> it is pagan. Right. It's the, all so, deities are born. And it. pagan. That is exactly right. Has been incorporated. The Christian church, way back then, to Rome, they joined in to pagan worship. I mean, when when they joined into Rome, they they united with the, the it Roman Constantine. Catholic it was Constantine. Church. It was, Constantine is who brought all these yeah. traditions they in. They pagan, <coughs> paganism into their. They used all the pagan gods. Listen, every pagan god was born on when. December the 25th. What? So just put Guess who wasn't born on December 25th? Yeshua. Our Savior. Yeshua. Yeshua was not born on December 25th. Sukkot, the time period around Sukkot is, is more exact on the time period that he was born. And amazingly, during the Feast of Sukkot, or Booths, what do we put up? We erect a sukkah, which is a tent, a temporary shelter. And we spend seven days with Yahweh during that feast. And it's a commanded feast. It's one of the three feasts where, it, where the men of Israel were, were commanded to come back to Jerusalem. That's how important it was. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is something to honor. 7,000 years. Hanukkah, the, the time period of Hanukkah is more than likely the time that he was conceived. Mm -hmm. And Hanukkah this year is going to be, it starts on December the 23rd. The last year it was around the Christmas period as well. So will we celebrate Hanukkah? Absolutely. Make little gifts to give to people. Little tiny gifts that don't cost you anything. Toothpicks. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, guys, little thoughtful Where's gifts Gary? that you could bring to someone. I know Gary's always bringing toothpicks. I hope you wrong. A monkey rock. Oh, I forgot about the monkey rock. <laughs> Little thing. He may have fallen out my window. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but but listen, guys, <clears throat> I, I, we're, we're going to stop now. But but we are in that time of year where everyone in here is going to have a lot of problems explaining to your family why you're not going to go over there and eat their Christmas ham <laughs> and their, their shrimp souffle. <laughs> Uh, it's tough and the crab patties. Huh? It's tough, but it's rewarding. Guys, there is such a freedom from from honoring the the festivals that our Father has commanded. There is there is a blessing that comes about. It's a blessing honoring Shabbat. <coughs> it truly is. So, uh, 
listen, on Monday, this Monday, and I want everyone in here who attends on the, the Monday um, Bible study, I want us to spend about 15 minutes and do a live stream for Shabbat. Strictly on Shabbat with verses that back it. I want to do that. I think it's important. Listen, people, it's not this, the first day of the week. It's not on Sunday. Again, sun, God's, little G, how do you do that? Little G, my granddaughters could teach me how to do the sign language. Little G, little O, little D, sun gods. That's the day that they were honored. And it's like Bill said, the Roman Catholic Church came up with all of these celebrations and they tried to incorporate it into the, the commandments that Yah gave us. They twisted it all up and they stole away our, our calendar. So I'm going to leave it at that. But do your research. Listen, don't listen to men. Don't listen to women. Don't listen to women. Don't listen to me. Prove yourself worthy and study the scriptures. I don't care if you've got an NIV, even at one of those worthless message Bibles that has been so <laughs> twisted. It has been so twisted. Even that will bring you more truth than listening to, to some of the, the pastors who are up there telling you that grace is going to get you all the way through. All you have to do is have your ticket stamped and you're done. You can backslide and listen, not honoring Shabbat. The Sabbath is a sign between Yah and his children. That's his sign. Guess what's the sign between Hasatan and his children? Sunday. Sunday. I'm telling you, Sunday is a sign of Hasatan, of Satan. It's not the sign of and, Yahweh. And, and I'm going to have a lot of people that get mad. And you know how I know? Said. Because Scripture tells me so. Yeah, it's not Yah's sign. Ask for discernment in the Word. Mm -hmm. Ask for truth. Ask the Spirit to guide you. <coughs> Guys, let's Ruth. pray. Look it up. Let's pray right now. Uh, let's pray for our live streamers and for everyone in here. Abba. <laughs> We just come to you on this most blessed day. Father, it's the day that we find your favor. And Father, we, we repent. We repent for the things we've done this week, this even this day, uh, even coming to uh, our Sabbath study. Uh, we thank you for the food that you've provided. And Father, we're praying for radical change. Radical change. Permanent radical change. Father, in ourselves in ourselves and in each other. And Abba, we're praying that truth will invade your children. What we know, Father, is that you have to call them or their ears are not open. Right. But, but we're going to ask that there's no anger over the things that have come out of my mouth today. Father, the words that I've spoken have been nothing but what has come out of your word. Yeah. And it is that the Sabbath is your day. It's the seventh day of the week. It's the day you rested. And it's the day that you, the creator of the whole entire the whole world, everything in it. We, there's nothing that was not created without Yeshua and you. You want to spend one day a week with us, and we refuse to do it. Father, bring complete understanding. Open people's ears and eyes and their heart. Break through that stony, evil heart that Jeremiah talks about, Abba, and bring truth. Let them see truth today. Father, bless Bless your children, and uh, we just thank you. Again, we just thank you and praise you for this day in the precious name of our Savior, our Messiah, our Redeemer, our Redeemer. Father, without our Redeemer, um, even, even our righteousness is those filthy rags. We have to rely on our Savior, our Redeemer, to get us in through that gate because we, we are not clean enough. No matter how hard we try and we strive, we can never be perfect. So, Father, we just thank you and praise him, our Redeemer. In the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. And that was actually a puppy dog that's in the room. I was like, so, so, to our live streamers, guys, we're, we're continuing on in, in 2nd Ezra, also known as 4th Ezra, this afternoon. It is going to be a dynamite study. I hope that you can join us. We're going to go and grab a bite. I think that, that uh, Baxter is fixing to get him a bite. Okay, I think he's fixing to bite somebody. Yeah. <laughs> this, after we finish eating, Bethany's going to do um, something on uh, Hanukkah. We're not going to live stream it because we want to make sure everything is going to be perfect. 
So uh, bless you all, live streamers. We pray for you every single Shabbat. And uh, we, we hope you learned something today. And we, what we pray is that no one's offended. Be blessed and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.